Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be invited to Seoul to speak on human resources. The subject given to me by the organizer is global talent and global prosperity. Arvin Tofla, uh, as you know, has written a book called The Third Wave. It was a spectacular book that has influenced so many people. In his theory, the first wave was agricultural revolution. But if you look at the situation today, countries like Argentina and Australia are very competitive. We in Japan cannot compete with Australian farmers. In fact, the cost of growing rice is 20 times that of Australian farmers. There's no way we can compete in the first wave industries. Second wave is, of course, industrial revolution. This is basically manufacturing. China's wage is again 120th that of Japan, and there's no way we can compete with China if they can do a good job. Vietnam's wage is half of China's, and Myanmar's wage is half of Vietnam's. So therefore, for simple production and manufacturing work, there's no way we can make living on the second wave industries. The third wave, services and information and knowledge. In fact, uh, Peter Drucker once called that we are moving into the knowledge society. There will be plenty of knowledge workers. But now India kicks in. Some East European countries and Russia also very strong in this. And there is also cross-border business process outsourcing going on because of the internet. So we can't compete with India with again one-tenth of their engineering cost or telephone center operator's cost. We need a fourth wave in order for us to keep the current living. The million dollar question to all of you in Korea as you organize HR seminar is what is the fourth wave? How can we live in the 21st century? Well, Thomas Blakesley wrote a book which I translated into Japanese already 20 years ago, and it's called The Right Brain Revolution. It's the function of your right side of the brain, holistic brain, not the logical memorial brain, but it's the idea and concept brain. I like this book. I've used it for my own research work. Makes sense. Now my friend Daniel Pink has come up with a new book, again emphasizing the role of the right side of the brain. And his title is A Whole New Mind. That will be so important in the 21st century. He says what's important for developed countries is the six senses. And in these six senses, he includes such things as design capabilities, story making, storytelling capabilities, symphony, which is a harmony of overall things, sympathy with people, ability for you to sympathize with other people, play, and meaning. Can you find the meaning of a meeting like this? You see, because you are not competing on the basis of cost. You are competing on the basis of values. This makes sense? I again translated this book into Japanese. But a whole new mind doesn't translate well into Japanese. So I wanted to call it the fourth wave. So I called up my friend Alvin Tofla. And I said, can I use this title of fourth wave in the Japanese translation only? He said, absolutely not. 
because when he speaks around the world on his third wave theme, everyone in the audience asks, Mr. Toffler, what's the fourth wave? So you have to save that title for me, he said. So I told Daniel that, um, that we can't use it. Then he suggested a title that he used in Brazil, in Portuguese version, which is the Right Brain Revolution. I said, I can't use it, because when I translated Thomas Blakesley's book, that was a title in Japan, so I can't use it. So we simply called it High Concept. High Concept, and that is exactly what would make sense in the 21st century. Of course, John Naisbitz used high touch as sort of a phrase to talk about exactly the same thing. In my recent book, The Next Global Stage, that was published in English language first, I use the word kosoryuk. Those of you who can read Chinese characters will understand that there is no English equivalent of kosoryoku, but I introduced this one in English language because this is what I'm talking about. Root cause of the problem today, as we move into the 21st century deeply, is that each institution, school, political organizations, family, community, has different time and geographical horizon. Politics and diplomacy are in the 19th century. There is no question about that. Geopolitical framework of the 20th century, particularly Cold War framework. We're still living in that framework. And media, there are lots of media people here, are provincial because they have to live on their subscribers. So like politicians, depending on voters, media is very much local and provincial because that's what they make money on. So if they are global, that media doesn't get any subscription. So the nature of media is provincial. They are always advocating for protectionism, advocating for selfish, inward-looking policies. Scholars study past examples and put into framework. For example, my friends um, who wrote the uh, famous book In Search of Excellence, or my friend um, uh, Michael Porter of Harvard, he studies examples after examples and say, these are the characteristics of excellent companies. And these are the characteristics of not so good companies. And therefore, in order to, for business to succeed, here is the framework. Wrong. Because that is a study of past examples. You see, in a rapidly changing world, if you teach the students of the success stories of five to ten years ago, their brain is cast in concrete. That's a terrible thing. All right? Business is looking at the global opportunities with may, maybe three to one to three year planning horizon. Beyond that is a daydream. Stock market is different. Stock market is looking at net present value as the business goes on to infinity. That's why Tower Records filed Chapter 11 when the market started coming down like this, only 15%. Because implication of iPod, if you extract that one like this, there's no value. And therefore, the stock market killed them. It's not the business that killed them. It is the stock market that killed Tower Records and Blockbuster for that matter. Money today is the most abundant commodity in the world. And this money migrates across the national borders and money is bias free as long as there is a return. American money goes to Islamic countries because they are making 10, 20, 30, even 50% return annually. 
There's no religion there. Americans are bias-free when it comes to return on investment. The money migrates across the borders. You see, different members of the world have very different time and geographical horizons. That's the problem. Therefore, we have a very old mental framework, and that's the real problem. Example one, America's single hegemony, and of course, military, IT, excuse me, this is not form, it's from, from military to IT. I disagree with that. The world is full of opportunities and potential, it's not concentrated on to, in, in the United States. It's not concentrated, as I wrote the book 20 years ago, of triad of Europe, Japan, and the United States. It is multipolar. Opportunities are everywhere. Look at the return last year on the stock exchange. If you are to buy index or sovereign fund, this is the return you got used to be Europe, Japan, and the U.S. But now, opportunities to make money is everywhere. In fact, over the last 10 years, the best return was Egypt. Okay? And Korea was leading the league last year, but not this year. And China was actually negative. Example two. East Asia. Before I came to this conference, some journalists sent me a set of questions. All these questions were centered around hatred between Japan and China, Korea and Japan, and North Korea's nuclear explosion, etc. And, you, you know, this antagonistic view of East Asia. I sympathize with the uh, journalist, but East Asia is divided and antagonistic with each other. Nothing could be farther from the truth, at least economically. East Asia is now actually like the EU without a political framework. Taiwan and China theoretically are in war, but they are in honeymoon. 90,000 Taiwan companies are actually operating in China, and they are employing more than 20 million people in China. And these Taiwanese are so crucial in driving Chinese national corporations that if something happens between the two countries, China will die first because the economy will stop right away. It's good that these people from, from Taiwan speak English, Japanese, and Mandarin. They are almighty in the mainland China. They are in honeymoon. Beijing doesn't like uh, Taipei, but mayors and governors love Taiwanese business people. Both are CLOC. You will see in my presentation. This is like Hanzai League of Medieval Europe, and it's a borderless CLOC spearheaded by Korea. And of course, its focal point is Busan. It's a very dynamic harbor, and it's a very powerful one. Japan, luckily, is the net beneficiary of interregional trade. Machinery, critical components, some design work will go via Korea or directly to China, and then Koreans and Taiwanese go to, to China and make products, and then ship out through Busan, to the United States and the rest of the world. Our trading with Korea, Taiwan, and China today surpass our trading with the United States, which has been traditionally the dominant trading partner for us. Okay? So that's the reality of East Asia. As we do so, the Japanese Multinationals also migrate to the United States. Our trade deficit with China grows, but no problem, because it's the Japanese companies out of China doing this. 
And therefore, we are not worried about trade deficit with China because we can recover that deficit with Korea, Taiwan, and the United States. And that is the mechanism that is developing in East Asia. In fact, East Asian trade is catalyzed by China because they are so open to the Koreans, to the Japanese, to the Americans, and to the Taiwanese, in fact, for the rest of the world. Compare this situation 10 years ago versus today. How important China is in catalyzing the trade in East Asia. And because Taiwan and Korea have very similar trade structure, I have put those two countries together in this triad tetrahedron chart. Okay, we should be congratulating this interregional trade. There is no other region that is so flourishing. China also benefits from the direct foreign investment and it is increasing, particularly from Korea and Taiwan. Excuse me. I need to go back and show you one chart. Oh, no, sorry. This. This is the most important chart that shows collectively the intra-region, inter-region trade within East Asia. Today is already 50% of our entire trade with the rest of the world. Inter-region trade of EU is 60%. Ours amongst ourselves uh, is already over 50%. It is far above NAFTA which is Mexico, Canada, and uh, the United States. And NAFTA is now declining in terms of its trading amongst themselves. Therefore, without the political framework, this East Asian trade with each other, Korea with China, Japan, vice versa, okay? And that is now forming over 50% of our trade, okay? Japan, if you look at this, and many Korean uh, scholars say Japan is declining, that's a superficial phenomenon. If you look at the Japanese strengths, it is upstream. It is the silicon wafers, photoresist, and all the upstream functions that Japan is very strong in terms of machinery and medium uh, sort of intermediary products, it is halfway there. When you look at the finished products, Japan's share is about a quarter, particularly in this. So we are not so strong in the downstream, but Japan is extremely strong in upstream. Same situation is true in semiconductor. Okay, upstream, Japan, therefore we provide machinery and the basic materials like photoresist and silicon wafers, and then other countries assemble, add value assemble. And therefore, if you look at the situation, it is a wonderful division of labor. And therefore, this acceleration of collaboration is something that we should be congratulating as opposed to complaining. If you look at the equity situation, Japan looks much better. Uh, left side is the DVD, Rome. If you look at the production share of Japan, it's 50%, but equity share is 70%. For digital camera, the production share of Japan is less than 50%, and China is quite strong, but if you look at the equity share of, of the digital camera production, Japan is 75%. And therefore, you really have to look at the equity, you have to look at the components, and value-added stream in this region. Korea has got this situation uh, figured out. It is importing critical components and machinery from Japan. And therefore, as Korea increases trade surplus with China and the United States, it suffers from deficit with Japan. This is a structural problem 20 years ago. 10 years ago and still persist. Uh, business as usual looks very good. Busan is uh, flourishing. 
But this is the situation. And in fact, the role of Busan is a bit problematic because Korean companies go to Yantai, Tianjin, and Qintao, and uh, Dalian, and they use tax-free zones, therefore not officially export from Korea. When they bring these things back on the barge, they reload to mega carriers in Busan, officially recorded as export. Therefore, hollowing of Korean industry is taking place, and yet government doesn't have the statistics because there is no rule of how to report these statistics when you start using Yellow Sea free trade zones. Okay? In fact, Yellow Sea has become almost like a lake, almost the hinterland of Korea. Korea is now a very powerful operator in the Yellow Sea free trade zone. And this is the order of investment of Korea on the left-hand side, and these are the regions Korean companies prefer. They don't go to China all over the place. They go to four or five very special regions of, of China, and all across the Yellow Sea. And, and that is, as I say, very similar to the Hansai League of medieval Europe in the Baltic Sea. Okay. Japanese companies therefore want to work with Korean companies to exploit the opportunities in China. And there are lots of discussions between Korean and Japanese companies as to what to do in China and with China. And these are the examples of collaborations between Japan and, and Korean companies. If you look at the LCD, liquid crystal display, flat panel uh, television, it is indeed the collaboration of Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. No country, no manufacturer is autonomous and independent, independently competitive. You have to work with just about everyone in this region in order to succeed. Best example of this is this. iPod in its first three years sold 90 million units. Amazing for an American company which has lost this type of industry. The secret of Apple computer is this. It designed and developed the OS. Actually, this OS development was an Indian in the Silicon Valley. And then used the Taiwanese companies operating in China and bought the best components and manufacturing know-how from East Asian countries. And as a result of this collaboration, they were able to ramp up to 90 million production per year. You see, it's important for any of us in this region, or for that matter in the US and Europe, to figure out who's who, and who can do what, to what kind of product. Apple Computer's success is knowing this region inside out. So it's not only the matter of Yellow Sea. Uh, I think there are uh, several regions within East Asia that are sort of mutually interconnected. So that's the story of East Asia, and therefore East Asia fighting with each other, which is a political and journalistic overtone, is not seen in the business world. It's probably time for us in East Asia to put together our collective wisdom officially. Compare this with EU. Our achievement is similar to EU, but we don't have an official currency. Everything is traded on the basis of US dollars. Um, the, everything is driven by the private sector as opposed to government. Government is busy fighting with each other. And of course, migration of people is restrained and restricted. Uh, whereas in Europe, this is not the case. Defense um, is bipolar with the United States. 
bilateral, I should say, with the United States, whereas Europe has NATO, the total organization. So, going back to the notion of 21st century people in education, the most important I, uh, uh, thing about the 21st century education is that there is no answer. 19th century, 20th century education, there was a school, there was a teacher. But if there is no answer, there is no teacher. You see? There may be facilitators or catalysts for discussion, but there is no teacher. And of course, there is a constantly changing answers. I ask you, mostly Korean people, what is your opinion of North Korea? Ten years ago, enemy number one. Five years ago, with uh, then uh, President um, Kim Dae-jung, oh, it may be okay, you know. And now, it is very okay. After the nuclear test, oops, wait a minute. Now the pendulum has swung back and say, yeah, it's okay. So the answer constantly changes. We can't even define who our enemy is, right? We have to learn from everyday life and from friends, not from teachers, because they don't know the answer. Okay, and we have to have or give youngsters the courage to act and achieve. And that is more important than knowing the right answers but not acting. Okay, results is very important. Network, as Francis Fukuyama said, is important, and it's more important probably than pyramid structure. But this changed the whole notion of competitors. Because pyramid means that there is only one guy at the top. But if it's a network, there are many hero spots. And in the classroom, those who are competing for the top position in the, in the scores of school, they don't like each other because they're competing for number one in the class. But in the network society, the more you know people, more competent people you know, the better off you are. And therefore, this changed the whole notion. There are so many hero spots. And the, the way you know people matters, okay? Now, we have to emphasize creativity, entrepreneurship, leadership, synthesis, initiatives, and action, logical thinking, problem solving, fact finding, hypothesizing, and proving. Okay, because in the society where there is no answer, this is the way to get to the answer, or better answers. Then you have to have the courage to act on the final. The leadership of the 21st century comes from your ability to synthesize. I have a point of view, but what is yours? And then when he or she said something, then you accept this and synthesize and say, in that case, why don't we do this? That is called the leadership. There is no answer, but you are finding the answer constantly. Very important. Therefore, entire education system is obsolete. You cannot ask the schools and education system to change, at least in Japan. I have seen some changes taking place in Korea, but at least in Japan, asking our Ministry of Education and asking our schools to change is almost like asking cats to bark. The, the reason is this. In the 21st century, Harvard Business School said there's a case study. Come on. Let's do the case for YouTube. A case was developed, taking nine weeks. And now it's obsolete. It's under Google. All right? Everything is changing every day. So in my own business school, we have our talks, real-time online case study. This week, I say, what if you are Richard Wagner of GM? What would you do? If you are Carlos Ghosn, what would you do? You know, your company is declining. Renault and Nissan is declining. What would you do this week? And this is the way to train future executives. 
It has to be online. You can't use the case workers to develop a case taking nine months because just about all cases are obsolete three months from now. Framework. Terrible thing because it means a mental block. So block busting is what educational institution needs. Oops, I've lost this one. I've got a mental block. Okay, we, uh, technology is here. I have a memory over here. Memory stick. Can someone stick this in to the computer? Or oh, we can switch over to uh, a Q and A. Well, just about to finish. So. Anyway, my point is, in the 21st century, the education um, has to change fundamentally. Rather than asking the existing institutions to change, I think it's better to start a new one on the green field. Um, much better, because it's difficult for the establishment to change. And therefore, I am making my own effort to establish a cyber university um, of my own, it's called Business Breakthrough. Um, it's offered 24 hours, 365 days to anybody in the world. And, and this is very, very important because it's interactive, uses satellite and broadband, uh, lots of classroom discussions. I learn every day from my students and therefore an old man like me can also catch up with what's happening in the world. It's extremely important that, uh, that we stay current. Now, education system, for example, entrepreneurship. You have to start young. You have to start in the kindergarten. In fact, when I was in Finland, they were teaching the entrepreneurship using the example of a, a, a grocery, grocery store. You can, you can start thinking about how to make money, how to make a living, example of a nearby grocery market. How, how do they get the vegetables and how do they price and sell? What happens if the inventory is gotten rotten and you lose money? And it's extremely uh, important that people start thinking uh, on their own using their live exa examples, street examples, Go on, keep going, keep going. Now we're refreshing your memory. You have seen this chart? Second time it looks familiar, right? Let me handle it from here, okay? Smart point it is called, it's not working, it's not smart. Wow. There we go. <clears throat> the 20th century education was to memorize answers. Today, I have in my mobile phone Google through internet. And therefore, I know the answer like this. In fact, high school students all have Google, mobile Google. It's ubiquitous. Therefore, there's no use testing the memories. Everything you learn in the Japanese compulsory education can be condensed into a dollar, one dollar memory chip. That's the value of education in the 20th century. All right? And therefore, more important thing, now, in the school says no cheating. You should not cheat. 21st century, cheat, ask everyone, what is the answer? And then what is your point of view? Knowing everyone's view and, and all the facts and figures, what do you think? That is a very different kind of education. Instead of academic smart, we need street smart. And from teach to learn, 
And this is something I learned in Denmark. I'm very happy the Minister for Education is here from Denmark. It's very important to learn from countries like Denmark and uh, Finland, where they have made a major overhaul of education 10, 15 years ago. Pyramid to network, well-learned person to a leader, and knowledge to sense. If the fundamentals are so different, 20th century versus 21st century for the elements of education, you might as well start afresh. So here is my business breakthrough concept, and then I will just you know, show you what we do. Real-time online case every week, and a discussion on the Air Campus, uh, broadband learning, and um, attendance check is our patent. We know if you are watching, we can tell through our patent. Air Campus is the campus on which we all meet and discuss, or view the video uh, on demand. This is Air Campus screen, and it's a, it's a very easy thing. It's uh, browser-based, therefore you can participate from anywhere in the world, and course progress is monitored constantly by the students and also by the faculty and uh, pathfinder job of competency management. If you are looking to become a CEO or looking to become um, staff doing planning, you know, we can tell you what else you need to learn uh, in this competency task. So, in the 21st century, wealth of a nation is not based on resources, natural resources, or military power. It is based on its people. Wealth of a nation is the sum of its human capital. No greater, no less. Capital corporations and even land can be imported with smart regional policies. In fact, I'm proposing Japan to buy a piece of land in Australia for growing rice. This means we bought land, we imported land. And then, with our own method of security and traceability, we grow rice. So our farmers don't complain. They go and do it. Like French farmers, Danone, Farmers Cooperative, they could become global. Our subsidy on farmers, uh, one of the 47 states in Japan, Saitama, is half billion dollars a year. With that amount of money, an annual budget to subsidize farmers, you can buy the land in Australia suitable for rice growing. One year's budget for Saitama Prefecture alone is enough to buy the entire land required to produce 10 million tons of rice. And that is annual consumption of our country. In fact, subsidies of 400 20 billion dollars on the farmers over the last 10 years. You can buy Conagra and continental grain, all the majors, many times over. Human capital can be enhanced with the right educational system, as we have seen, and by creating a hub for talented people. Important to get these people to come in to work with you, Hollywood. Nicole Kidman is an Australian girl, but she goes to Hollywood. There are lots of Australians there making Hollywood famous. Not Australia famous, but Hollywood famous. Silicon Valley is called IC Valley because it's Chinese and Indians, Indian Chinese Valley, right? But now, joined by Russians and many others, Google, one of its two founders, is a Russian immigrant. Singapore and Hong Kong has lots of talents outside of their natural uh, citizens. Region states and small countries are fast in realigning uh, into this direction. As I said, the example of Denmark and uh, Finland, Chinese and Indian states. Chinese states are so autonomous that mayors and governors can make a decision to attract foreign companies, foreign capital, and even change some bylaws. Beijing doesn't know a thing about this. I have a company in uh, Dalian, and the mayor of Dalian can make a decision right on the spot, at the dinner table. And this is true with 160 cities in China, which are greater than one million people. 
Now, this is a good time、uh, oops. to stop because this is my view of how you go about developing a、um, talent and talented、uh, country、uh, in the 21st century. I thank you very much. Yes.、Yeah, uh, 혹시 질문이 있으십니까? 예, yeah, 질문 있으신 분들 계시는데 마이크 좀 전달해 주시겠습니까? Yeah. 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 저는 중앙대학교 국제경영대학원의 강철승 교수입니다. 오늘 교수님 그 발표 잘 들었습니다. 제가 묻고 싶은 것은 이렇게 인적 자원이라는 것이 굉장히 중요한데 조금 전에 그 말씀하신 것 중에서 아시아의 중요성에 대해서 한국과 중국과 일본에 대해서 얘기를 많이 하셨습니다. 그런데 저는 이런 그 중요한 아시 동북아시아에서 한 중일의 이렇게 중요함에도 불구하고 어 요즘 그 세계 그 경제를 봐보면 그 FTA가 그 이유를 중 이유나 또 미국을 중심으로 해가지고 어 중심이 되고 있는데 지금 한국에도 그렇고 일본의 FTA에 관련된 이런 것과 연결을 해서 왜 일본이 동북아의 선도적인 리더 역할을 하기 위해서 한국과 중국과 일본의 역사적인 정치, 경제, 사회적인 다른 모든 면에서 리더 역할을 하게 하기 위해서는 선도적인 역할을 해야 할 텐데 일본이 동북아의 FTA와 관련된 이런 이런 것에 아주 소극적이고. 모든 경제적인 건 미국과 미국을 위주로 해서 하고 있는지 이런 것들이 좀 해결이 돼야만 이 동북 아시아의 한국과 중국과 일본에 관한 인적 조류라든가 이런 것들이 원만이 되지 않겠느냐 그렇게 생각하는데 교수님은 어떻게 생각하고 계시는지요? I just said that that's not important. Economy is going very well. If you ask the politicians and journalists to sort out this problem, it will never be sorted out. That's why the reality of East Asia is much smoother and much better than you think. And that's why I say, let's move on. Now, if you ask the Japanese to straighten out、uh, Japanese politicians or Japanese bureaucrats, forget it. It's It's something that I've given up long time ago. I also look at your government, and I also give up this efforts to do anything with your government. So business will have to shape the future, and the reality is not that bad. And therefore, if you talk about FTA, well, look, we don't have an FTA agreement, but what you have seen, just I have shown you, without FTA, is remarkable. You see, Europe has FTA, maybe European Community, but their interdependence is as good as ours. So what's the reality? The reality is the economy, and that's why I say we should take the bias away and look at what is happening between consumers around the world and producers. And in this, those four countries are so close. If you look at the business people, what they're doing, they're doing fine. They don't want the government to know. They don't want the government to change because this is fine. Now, with FTA in Korea and Korea U.S. and Korea in Japan, I would like to ask Korean people: Which industries do you think you'll survive under FTA? And you have to really think hard because without fundamentally competitive, globally competitive industries, FTA is going to be a burden on you. United States is the freest market in the world, and therefore, if you have globally strong industries, you'll be winning in the United States. And therefore, that's the track record. Okay, and, and therefore, U.S. is a very good leading index of what will happen to Korean industries if 
FTA is consummated between Japan and Korea and Korea and the United States. And I just have to say, why do you make haste in areas where you haven't been prepared to, uh, you know, to fight? I think the current situation is good enough. FTA is a political agenda. And if you like FTA, ask business people, really, um, as to what they think. Because deep in their mind, they don't think they can survive in completely free, competitive world, except for two or three companies in Korea. And these are the same companies we keep talking about. But that's not enough to feed 45 million, possibly 70 million people if North joins you. And therefore, I would say, be careful when you talk about FTA. Uh, and you, you can't ask me to, to change the Japanese government. I've tried 20 years, you know, 20 years. Gave up. 네. 다른 질문 있으십니까? 네. Uh, my name is Hwa Gug Lee. I'm the vice president of Korea Cyber University. In Korea, there are 17 cyber universities. It's nice to meet a uh, Japanese cyber university owner. Uh. I have one uh, very simple uh, question and a broad uh, comment. Uh, you told about a different uh, uh, horizon of a different sector of social, social sectors. Like you, you told the institution, but I, I think it seems to be a social sectors. I quite agree that uh, politics in uh, 19th century is an obstacle for the globalization. But I'm not sure uh, about uh, media roles. You say the media uh, is provincial by nature of the subs subscription. But uh, you are ignoring uh, now this I technology about to say, uh, about, what about Googles? We don't pay, we don't uh, subscribe Googles. We can use it free of charge. And what about uh, CNN? What about YouTube? Uh, I think uh, that sort of the uh, media is leading globalization, it's not a hindrance. I, I'd like to ask about your opinion. Uh, my comment is about uh, uh, education. Uh, we say uh, 20th century education is obsolete, but uh, that sort of uh, argument has been uh, existed for the last uh, uh, several or uh, 20th centuries. In uh, century uh, uh, 19, we say we have an obsolete education system, so we must change education system for the 20th century. It will be the same after the uh, 10th century. In the 20th, 31st century, we'll say we must change uh, the education for the 32nd century. But education has uh, a very concrete things that uh, cannot be changed. For example, for children, we must teach them how to read, how to write, how to do arithmetics. Uh, we, you, you said memory must be uh, abandoned for the problem solving. But without memory, we cannot do any problem solving. We, we cannot do any inquiry process. We cannot teach in, uh, creative skills. Uh, so the education is uh, continually evolving and develop, developed. Uh, so we must uh, consider uh, uh, what should be, what should be kept for the next century and first should be changed. We can say next century you must uh, emphasize lifelong education rather than fixed school education. We can say we emphasize creativity rather than memory. But there are many things that should be kept in education, I think. I agree. Um, I, I, um, however, having been a management consultant, in order to change the company, you have to swing the pendulum. And, um, you know, my tactics is really to swing the pendulum. What you said is a very common sense, makes sense. So I agree with you. In reality, you have to do that. But the institution does not change unless you say, we have to go this way. In order for company to change, you have to swing the pendulum. And that's what I'm doing. And of course, in reality, memory is important. You have to know one plus one is two, maybe. Uh, but, but the emphasis has to change, and, and that's where I'm coming from, okay? Because there are 120 million people in Japan who will keep the old inertia, 
So one person swinging the pendulum wouldn't be too bad. Um, that would be my, my approach. The um, um, notion of media you talked about, YouTube, Google, etc. yes, that's right. I was more uh, talking about the subscriber-based media. Uh, as I said, subscriber-based media. Now, CNN, I disagree with you. That is the most America-centric media. And if you know Lou Dubs, um, you know, that is the polar opposite of what I have been advocating for in the borderless world. So CNN was initially a very much globally oriented um, institution. Now it is almost like the Voice of America. Uh, it has changed. Uh, it has changed because of the sponsors, because of the, the situation of U.S. media. So um, I, I, I would say, yes, you're right about uh, YouTube. You're right about Google. You, there are lots of things where there is no subscriber, subscription base. Okay, so I think you and I are agreeing on this um, in, in that uh, I am going to emphasize what is important. But also, what I'm doing in the high school education is, is I'm teaching. I'm, I'm also, you know, having the class for parents and students together. Because without changing the parents, I cannot change children. So my new cyber high school has a parent's uh, classroom along with the students. And I enjoy it. It is enormously important to change parents' perspective. And, and um, you know, I'm very happy that um, I'm able to spend some time on this. But, um, you know, you have to change parents. You have to change many things. But that's the new cyber high school. I'm doing my best as, 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 uh, as the best I can. Um, another thing is that uh, in the 21st century, management talent may become like sport athletes, musicians. Because you put kids in the Yamaha Music School at age four, some people go like this and so good that we have to privately tutor. And they become world-class violinists. There are many from this country. We have to recognize if they start learning computer at age 10, 11, 12, they could become tremendous architect of new computer system. Most Japanese games, TV games, are created by those people who are in the teens. And we are very, very strong in computer games because Ministry of Education doesn't exist for this. You, you see, we are richest in terms of talent pool where there is no guidelines for teaching. And these kids are great. And computer companies are now reaching out to them at age 12, 14, 15 to recruit because it's a competition toward this kind of talent. I, I used to be on the board of uh, Square, Square Enix, and, and we reach out to those people because the survival of a games company is to have so many of them come into your camp. And therefore, it's very similar to Tiger Woods, Maria Sharapova, and many musicians. So this is the notion that school goes by step by step by step. I think we have to give up this idea. Okay? Yeah, my name is uh, T.H. Kim, working for Samsung Corporation. Uh, I fully agree with your comment that the wealth of a nation really depends on the, uh, the human capital and so that the right education system is so important. Could you make some uh, comment on uh, the, uh, the right education system regarding to uh, two extreme cases? One extreme case is uh, to educate everybody, I mean, to educate every student uh, evenly and equally, to maximize the number of uh, students to be well educated. The other uh, extreme case is uh, the business world now is getting more and more diverse uh, so that, you know, the differentiation of education system is getting more important. Uh, you know, there may be some way to uh, well balance the uh, two extreme cases, but could you make some comment on the uh, the approach of the uh, education system? I think the um, general education should be aimed at uh, developing prudent citizens. 
citizens who are not fooled by consumer credit companies, etc., prudent in that they will stay within the bounds of laws, etc. They will have responsibility for the society, community, family, companies they work for. This is a prudence thing, and that's very important for the general public. On the other hand, in order to make the difference, I would still argue that uh, this approach by Yamaha is a very good one, and that is Yamaha Music School open for everyone. So many people in Japan and for the world, for that matter, can play the piano. But then two or three strikingly good people are brought into what they call JOC, Junior Original Concert, and they are given the environment of Mozart or Beethoven, and these people become so fantastic that they are winning in the Tchaikovsky contest, etc. Maria Sharapova was born in this poor uh, Siberian family, but father and Maria went to Florida for this uh, education, right, of tennis. It's important that we have both. But in Japan, everyone has to go through grade one, two, three, high school one, two, three, college one, two, three, everyone is the same. That's a golden equation for mass production, high quality volume. But it is a death for a nation where creativity, difference, and, you know, the United States. Their original people may not be that creative, but there are Indians and Russians and uh, Chinese and Koreans all over the place. So alternative to this system is to have these people to come in. But it has to be a fun place. These people are looking for fun and impact. And so if you can create the soil that is impactful, then you can, create, uh, you, can, you can gather all these talented people from the rest of the world. You don't have to educate. Because when you, you have these people nearby, then your own youngsters will work together. And then eventually you have a large pool of talent. So you can do either way. But this is very important. USA has a natural pool, natural place for talented people around the world to come. We are not. Korea is not. China is about to become. And that's why we have to worry about this situation. But that was a very good question. Thank you very much. 예, 아, 시간 관계상 질문은 이곳으로 마치도록 하겠습니다. 예, 강연해주신 오마이 게니지 회장께 다시 한번 감사의 박수 부탁드립니다. Thank you.